The evolution of snakes remains one of the most amazing mysteries of our planet. The first snakes appeared about 130 million years ago, and since then they have continued to amaze and amaze us with their features and adaptations. Snakes differ from other reptiles in their special body structure. They are limbless, and their body has a long and flexible shape, allowing them to penetrate into the narrowest corners and crawl on various surfaces. Of course, this anatomy is the result of millions of years of evolution, but the mechanisms that led to such changes still remain a mystery. The remains of snakes have always caused difficulties in their study. Most snakes are small and relatively fragile creatures, which means their body remains are often incomplete and scattered. This creates difficulties in understanding their evolutionary origins. However, Modern research in genetics and paleontology allows us to get closer to the solution to this evolution. Today, the prevailing view is that snakes evolved from some kind of terrestrial lizard of the early Cretaceous period. One of the most likely ancestors of snakes are considered to be varanids, a group of lizards that includes the largest modern representatives of lizards, Monitor lizards. Monitor lizards are majestic and powerful creatures that reach impressive sizes and are one of the top of the food chain in their ecosystems. It is interesting to note that the prehistoric snakes may have been close relatives of the giant prehistoric monitor lizard Megalania. Megalania was a huge lizard, measuring about 25 feet or almost 8 meters from head to tail and weighing over two tons. This is one of the largest land reptiles that ever lived on Earth. Although we can only guess at the rate of evolution of snakes of such gigantic size, fossil evidence indicates that such creatures did exist. To say that snake evolution is mysterious is an understatement. Despite the fact that we already know a lot about the origin and development of these amazing creatures, many questions remain unanswered. However, through ongoing research and new discoveries, we hope to unravel more of this amazing evolutionary history in the near future. Until recently, Gigantophis was considered the largest prehistoric snake in the world of paleontology. This amazing creature reached a length of about 33 feet or 10 meters from head to tail and weighed at least half a ton. According to its classification, Gigantophis belonged to the group of Madsoid snakes, which indicates its close relationship with the widespread genus Madsoia. Tetrapodophis. This snake was an inhabitant of the Cretaceous period, approximately 110 million years ago, and its remains were discovered in Brazil's fossil-rich Crato formation. Tetrapodophis was a tiny creature, only 8 inches or 20 centimeters long, and it lived on the shores of a salt lake, among dense thickets of succulents and other drought-resistant plants. Its diet likely consisted of small amphibians and lizards that hid among the plants, providing shelter from the dinosaurs and pterosaurs that lived in abundance in the area. Surprisingly, the remains of Tetrapodophis's last meal, a salamander, were preserved between the bones of his skeleton in the place where the intestines were located during life. This gives us an interesting insight into its food preference and its role in the ecosystem. Tetrapodophis's body had several adaptations to its burrowing lifestyle, suggesting its ability to adapt to life in the ground. 
However, Dalakosaurids, which included Tetrapodophus, also had adaptations for swimming. This highlights the uniqueness and diversity of snake evolution and their ability to adapt to different environments and lifestyles. The history of the evolution of snakes and their diversity still aroused the admiration and interest of scientists. Each new discovery brings us closer to understanding these amazing and mysterious creatures. But there are still many questions waiting to be answered. Pacarajas is an ideal intermediate form between lizards and snakes. These ancient reptiles possessed a purely snake-like body, complete with scales, a python-like head, and a pair of vestigial hind limbs located a few centimeters from the end of the tail. Pachirahis lived 120 million years ago and measured 40 inches and weighed 2 pounds. Hasiophis some paleontologists believe that Hasiophis was related to the older snakes of the genus Pacarias, but most of the evidence places these snakes in a separate genus. Hasiophis is an extinct genus of snakes with preserved hind limbs. Represented by one known species, Hasiophis terrasanctus. His remains were found in Palestine. This is one of three genera of snakes from the Cenomanian stage that have hind limbs. The genus was named after the late paleontologist George Haas, who first began working on the fossils from Einyabrid and before his death began describing the genus, plus the Greek word Ophis for snake. The species named Terrasanctus means holy land. The snake measured about 40 inches, or just over a meter, and had 75 teeth. Hasiophis lived 100 million years ago and was a very toothy snake. Madzoya madzoya is an extinct species of prehistoric snake that appeared on Earth approximately 90 million years ago and went extinct 2 million years ago. These reptiles lived in the Cretaceous and Pliotocene periods. The remains of these creatures were first discovered in the 1930s in Argentina. The species was named by George Gaylord Simpson in 1933. Now let's talk about another snake called Najash rionagrina. This reptile lived in wooded areas of South America. It received its common name in honor of the legendary serpent from the biblical tradition who tempted Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. Najash lived in Patagonia about 90 million years ago. The anatomy of the Patagonian snake clearly indicates that it lived in burrows. It had two small hind legs, which it used from time to time, mainly moving along the ground like modern snakes. Proponents of the aquatic origin of snakes claim that their ancestors were mosasaurs. They theorize that snakes began to evolve during the Jurassic period, about 150 million years ago. However, science currently lacks any documentary evidence to support this claim. During the early Cretaceous, snakes diversified into several groups, including terrestrial snakes such as Najash, as well as aquatic snakes. It is possible that different forms of snakes independently and simultaneously lost their limbs. The pendulum has now swung towards the terrestrial origin of snakes. But the available fossil evidence is clearly insufficient to reach a definitive conclusion. However, the discovery in Patagonia will challenge supporters of the marine hypothesis and stimulate further research in this area. Sene. This creature lived 70 million years ago in the territory of modern India. Sanic was significantly smaller in size than the world's largest prehistoric snake. 
but it is the only species that hunted dinosaurs with much confidence. Mainly for babies and small species of dinosaurs. Titanoboa. This is the largest prehistoric snake in the world that has ever lived on our planet. This giant snake reached 50 feet or 15 meters in length and weighed about one ton. The only reason why Titanoboa did not hunt dinosaurs is that this giant appeared several million years after the death of the kings of the Cretaceous period. South American Titanoboas that were over 50 feet or 15 meters long and thought to have weighed up to a ton. Oddly enough, Titanoboa date back to the Middle Paleocene era, about 5 million years after the dinosaurs went extinct, but millions of years before mammals evolved to gigantic size. The only logical conclusion is that this prehistoric snake was hunting equally huge prehistoric crocodiles, a scenario you can expect to see in a computer simulation in some future television special. It is also possible that the paths of this snake sometimes crossed with the same giant prehistoric tortoise carbonomies. Sanaje indicus was a species of prehistoric snake that lived in India about 70 million years ago. Unlike its larger relative, the Titanoboa, Sanic was smaller in size, but is believed to be the only species of snake that hunted dinosaurs with great confidence. Sanica's main prey was probably baby dinosaurs and small species of these prehistoric creatures. Its appearance occurred in the Middle Paleocene era, when there were no longer dinosaurs, but there was still no development of giant mammals. These interesting creatures represent an amazing example of the variety and size that existed in the prehistoric world. The Wanambi is a large strangler snake that lived in Australia about 40,000 years ago. She preferred to live near water sources, where she hunted kangaroos, wallabies, and other animals that came to drink. The Aborigines forbade their children to play in these places because of the danger posed by the Wanambi. The description of the Wanambi is based on fossils found in South Australia. It is the first known extinct snake to be discovered in Australia. Its name comes from the local Aboriginal people and means rainbow snake as it was mentioned in mythology as such. About 10 years ago, paleontologists using the latest technology discovered a snake with hind legs and sediments about 95 million years old. This discovery made it possible to identify the ancestor of snakes and unravel the mystery of the evolutionary process of loss of legs in these reptiles. Fossils belonging to the snake Eupodophis desguensi were found in 2000 in the Lebanese village of Al-Namura. The dimensions of this reptile were about 50 centimeters in length. The discovered remains were transferred to the Paris Museum of Natural History for further research. Since both legs of this snake were equally developed, we can conclude that the absence of parts of the limb was not the result of injury or developmental defects, but indicates the beginning of the reduction of legs in the ancestors of snakes. This interesting discovery has helped expand our knowledge of the process of evolution and adaptation of reptiles. Currently, there are only three fossil snakes with preserved hind limbs and lost forelimbs. They are classified into three different groups, Haseophis, Pachyophis, and Eupodophis. Due to some genetic changes, the paws were unable to if they could not fully form in the embryonic period, snakes were born with slightly unfinished legs. 
there were two mutational genes that were responsible for the development of limbs. As a result, these two genes disappeared and the development of paws in ancient snakes stopped. All known snakes are predators. Snakes feed on a variety of animals, including marine life, vertebrates and invertebrates. There are species of snakes that specialize in eating a certain type of prey, that is, stenophages. For example, the glossy crayfish snake, Liodites rigida, feeds almost exclusively on crayfish, and African egg snakes, Dasipeltis, feed only on bird eggs. Non-venomous snakes swallow prey alive, for example, snakes, or first kill it by squeezing it with their jaws and pressing their body to the ground or suffocating it in body coils. Venomous snakes kill prey by injecting venom into its body using specialized venom-conducting teeth. Snakes typically swallow their prey whole. The swallowing mechanism consists of alternating movement of the right and left halves of the lower jaw. The snake, as it were, pulls itself onto its prey. Some species of snakes feed on other snakes, such as king cobras. The ancestors of snakes led a burrowing lifestyle. Therefore, a long body was necessary in order to more easily squeeze through the ground. Also, in connection with this, they gradually lost the external openings of their ears, so that the earth would not become clogged. Limbs and movable eyelids, because there is no need for them underground. In moist soil, the eyes do not dry out but instead have acquired a transparent film formed from fused eyelids, protecting the eye. Which is why it seems that the snake is hypnotizing us, and it seems to us that its gaze is motionless. For quite a long time, lizards from the group of monitor lizards, Varanidae, were considered the ancestors of snakes. These lizards, like snakes, have a long and movable tongue, an additional movable articulation of the branches of the lower jaw, as well as a vertebral structure similar to snakes. In addition, earless monitor lizards, Lanthanotidae, living in Indonesia, as their name suggests, like snakes, lack external ear openings. However, the details of the skull structure of monitor lizards and snakes are very different, and in addition, molecular DNA analysis shows that the two groups are very distant from each other. Also against this version is the fact that among the monitor lizards there are no representatives leading a completely underground lifestyle, but with another group of modern lizards, called geckos, geconidae, snakes have much more common structural features. In particular, the skulls of snakes and geckos are completely devoid of temporal arches and have a movable articulation of the lower jaw bones. The eyelids of many geckos, like those of snakes, are fused and form the transparent outer shell of the eye. And finally, among these lizards there are those who children have a burrowing lifestyle. The most characteristic here are representatives of the subfamily Lepidopus. Its representatives, living in Australia and New Guinea, have a snake-like elongated body and in appearance are extremely reminiscent of snakes. This similarity is also emphasized by the absence of the forelimbs and significant reduction of the hind limbs, which usually have the appearance of short scaly outgrowths sometimes ending in claws as well as the absence of external openings of the ears. Of course, it is unlikely that scale pods were the direct ancestors of snakes. However, apparently, these are one of their closest relatives. In addition, molecular research data also suggests that, in terms of DNA structure, the closest relatives of snakes are geckos. 
According to these data, geckos and snakes separated from other squamates 180 million years ago, and the separation of these groups occurred a little later, approximately 165 million years ago. That is, approximately when, according to paleontologists, this group arose. So everything fits here too. So, a new research technique has helped scientists fill a gap in the history of reptiles and solve one of the most intriguing mysteries of evolution. It should be noted that paleontologists generally have high hopes for this technique. It allows you to obtain images with a resolution of several microns a thousand times less than what a hospital tomograph provides. And to obtain a three-dimensional image, fossil bones need only be rotated at a small angle and several thousand two-dimensional images taken until a full 360-degree rotation is completed. From these images, a 3D image is then compiled using a special computer program, showing not only the surface, but also the internal structure of the bones. So, perhaps in the near future this research technique will help solve other evolutionary mysteries. And many gaps in the history of various groups of animals will be filled. Thank you for watching our episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And also click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting episodes from the Real Unreal channel.